serious words the most creepy, unlikely, or unexplainable occurrence to ever happen to you or someone you know that is not fictional? When I was 10, I had a dream about being in a barren playground, brown dirt and monkey bars placed aside from each other. It looked nothing like the playgrounds I saw in my neighborhood. In that dream, I turn my head and in front of me, there's a girl sitting on a bench telling another girl beside her, you can't tell anyone okay, before whispering in her ear. I wake up, and I'm utterly confused, because there's no plot and the entire dream and background of it is meaningless to me. Two months later, I move to a different country, Japan, and in that new school, I'm at a friend's birthday party. My Japanese speaking isn't as good as my listening, so I'm just standing in the middle of the schoolyard, staring at the monkey bars and I can't help but think they look really familiar. I turn around just in time to see my friend, the birthday girl, whisper to a friend beside her in Japanese, don't tell anyone, okay? Sleep paralysis only happened once and a long time ago, but that feeling of being awake but not being able to move anything other than my eyes is one that will stay with me forever. Happened when I was probably 10. I was laying on the bed in my parents' room when I happened to look at the screen on the TV set. It wasn't on, but the reflection on it was not the room I was in, but the living room, which was on the other side of the house. Kinda boring, but I'm 30 now, and I've never forgotten it. I was sleeping one night with my cat on my bed. I was woken up by what I thought was a dream of long white, I mean the color white, hand grabbing me. I felt butterfly in my stomach, so I woke up. My cat was freaked out and hissing right where the hand came from. To start off, I'm not religious now. When I was younger, however, I was raised Roman Catholic and had complete faith. I was around 10 years old and I had a pet toad. I somehow lost it, and my mom was getting all anxious, because reptiles creep her out. So, since I believed, I simply prayed for help to find the toad. Immediately a blueprint of my house popped up in my mind, like an x-ray vision of the house in blue, and a brightly highlighted area behind a dresser in my sister's room was standing out. Before I even checked there, I said I know where it is. There the toad was. I didn't think it was even strange, until I considered it later on in life. It was night, I was reaching for a pencil on my desk, desk is completely straight, and the thing suddenly rolls towards me. I was completely sober, jumped up and felt like I was going to pass out. Never happened again. About 10 years ago, I was 8, I was visiting my dad at his house. My stepmother was in the kitchen, and I was in the family room. We both saw my father, wearing a red flannel shirt and blue jeans, walk around the corner from the living room and start walking up the stairs. I followed him and called his name as he went up the stairs. He turned back and looked at me, got to the top of the stairs and went around the corner. I called his name again, then from the living room my dad popped his head up over the couch and asked what I wanted. He had been asleep on the couch the entire time, yet both my stepmother and I clearly saw him, wearing the clothes he had on the whole day and all, go from the living room up the stairs. It was the strangest thing I've ever seen. Both my stepmother and I still remember it and talk about it to this day. Edit. Also, it was broad daylight, so it wasn't some uncanny illusion of the night. At 14 years old, I woke up from a dead sleep and said out loud, my first child will be a boy. Right after that, I shook my head and asked myself WTF. I don't even want kids. I went back to sleep, but I never forgot how weird that was. Fast forward almost 10 years, and I'm pregnant for the first time. My coworker had given me a box full of baby boy clothes. I held on to them, even though two different ultrasounds said I was having a girl. I wanted a girl. I had a pink baby shower, a girl's name picked out, all that stuff, but I still didn't get rid of that box of boy clothes. I remembered my weird half-asleep statement 8 days before I was induced. I had another ultrasound to make sure the baby was doing okay. The first thing the tech said was, they said you're having a girl. That's funny, because here are his little boy parts. I cried in bed for two days straight, but the second I heard my son cry I fell in love with him. And I never doubted my gut again. 
when I was little, my parents were in the middle of divorcing, and my father would pick my sister and I up on Wednesday nights. We still lived in what passes for a rural town in Connecticut, and my father went to drop us off, but my mother wasn't home yet so we were waiting in the driveway in the middle of the woods pretty much. The car had a sunroof, and I was seated in the back staring out at the stars when suddenly something I can't identify flew overhead. It was essentially a bunch of large circular lights grouped in a circle rotating. They seemed to be very large, traveling at a high rate of speed at a decent altitude. It went by quickly enough that I didn't even say anything to anyone in the car. Nearly 20 years later I was reclined on the couch watching some UFO show, and they showed the exact thing I saw briefly. When they showed it I actually screamed and leapt to my feet. It took me a couple hours to calm down. It freaked me out so bad. We were driving in the middle of nowhere in Arizona, cornfields on both sides of the highway. Sky goes terribly dark, and we stop short when a man steps out of the stalks only a few meters ahead of our car. He's dressed in all white, beard down to his waist, crown on his head, holding a gigantic staff. He smiles at us, and says something in Latin, then disappears back into the stalks. Moments later, the sun breaks out from the clouds and we continue on our way, dazed and confused. A kid with jet black eyes knocked on my door, and asked to use my phone, because he was lost. When I closed the door, to contemplate on what to do, he disappeared in like two seconds. I lived on the second door of my apartment too. I came home from work one day and my couch was upside down. I lock my windows and drive screws into the corners, so they literally cannot be opened, and they weren't broken. The tiny scrap of paper I leave on top of the door was still there, as was the hair on the knob, so I know nobody entered, while I was gone. Apparently, my couch just decided to roll over all on its own. I never even tried to explain it, no good will come of that. I just instantly wrote it off as HMN, that's more than passing strange. This happened to a friend of my dad's. My dad's friend used to drive a hearse slash van, and he had to take a body one night to another city nearby. I don't remember which city, but it was in Arizona. It was quite a drive through the desert. At some point during the drive, he heard some quick breathing coming from the back of the hearse. Not wanting to look for fear of what was behind him, he continued toward the city, while keeping his eyes straight forward. Finally, he pulled into a populated place, and jumped out of the car not even bothering to close the door. A few seconds later, a little puppy jumped out. Apparently, the puppy hitched a ride, when he had stopped for gas, before leaving on his trip. Edit, thank you for my first gold. I sometimes get predictions, accurate down to every moven in my dreams. Not anything big just of future events. Sometimes, I feel like I'm living an alternate future. I have seen this episode, but this is completely different. In many places and events, I have a sense of deja vu event though I haven't visited or experienced that event or place before. Once, late one night, I had just finished showering. I'm in my bathroom drying off with my door open. As I'm daydreaming, I think I hear something in my living room slash kitchen area, which the living room is a few steps from where my bathroom is. Stopping to listen, I didn't hear anything else, so I thought it was my imagination and I went back to drying off. A few seconds later, I think I hear the noise again. This time being sure, I stopped, waited, and listened, when the noise started again. It took only a second or two to realize the noise sounded an awful lot like footsteps. Almost like someone wearing boots, and scuffling their heel against the floor. Frozen in place, unsure of what to do, I waited and counted 9 footstep noises until it stopped. Right at the entrance of the hallway. Directly facing my bathroom and me. Whatever that noise was, it has never happened again all these years later. When I was about 7th grad, 12 over 13 years old, my family and I moved into an old house. There were several times, when I was standing in my room, doing stuff without any loud noises around, when I heard a person breathing behind me. I first thought it was myself, but when I hold my breath I could still hear it. I was having a dream I can't really remember, but suddenly the dream switched to me lying in bed and I saw a girl at the side of my bed. Like a small Spanish or Asian girl, in white. Sounds cliche I know. 
when I looked at her in the eyes, she got really wide eyed, like she was scared that I had noticed her. It made me sit up in my bed in the dream and stare at her, curiously. She then glided over toward my TV, and then appeared to go through my floor to my first floor. I then woke up, sitting upright already, in the same position I was, when I was dreaming, looking toward my TV. We were all on a rural beach at a campfire one night there were, was about 10 of us there together having a drink singing and laughing. Suddenly there was a massive white flaps in the sky, and what sounded like a massive buzz pulse sound in the, the sky lit up green from the horizon, we all went instantly silent, so it wasn't like only one, if us imagined it, we all saw it, and the next day on the way home we were all chillin' and someone said I sent anyone gonna talk about what happened last night, 